All right. Let's look at some intentional torts. We know that the civil counterpart of a crime is a tort, and I just want to go through some of the torts. There's lots of different ones, but some of the more basic ones, these are ones that you probably are going to be familiar with anyway because they're very similar with criminal. Assault. Well, assault in criminal law was if you hit somebody. Some, uh, sometimes it was just a threat in, in a lot of states. It's the same thing in intentional torts. Um, if you threaten somebody, you could be sued for it. Again, you got to be able to show injury or damage, but uh, it is a tort. Same thing with battery. Battery is touching or hitting somebody, uh, unwanted touching or hitting. Um, and again, just like there is a, it, it's a crime in criminal law, it can also be a tort where you could be sued in, in civil law. So let's say that you punch somebody. You could be tried in criminal court, or you could be charged in criminal court, and let's say you had a trial, and you could be charged with that, let's say um, aggravated battery or something. Um, and you could, you know, if it was a serious enough uh, 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 attack, you could go to jail or prison for it. You could also be sued for those injuries that you caused that individual. So you could, the, there's an exact same tort as there is the crime. Infliction of mental stress is a little bit different. Infliction of mental stress is kind of like stalking, but it's causing, um, well, I guess mental stress. This is what it says. Uh, sometimes it's intentional infliction of mental stress. Some states have it labeled as that. Um, you know, if I would call you up and hang up, call, hang up, call, hang up, and, and I know this is causing you to be concerned about who's calling you or whatever. That could be intentional infliction of mental stress. Uh, wrongful death is a civil counterpart of any type of homicide. So if your actions lead to the death of another, whether it be a murder a man, or a manslaughter, um, it could be considered a wrongful death and you could be sued for that. Defamation are lies that harm a reputation. Uh, there's two types of defamation. There's slander and there's libel. Slander is, are spoken lies. Libel are written lies. But if I would um, write lies about you and, and that somehow harms your reputation, you could sue me for that, and, and that would be called defamation. Conversion, I don't know why we use this term, but it's really just the civil counterpart of theft. So if I take your goods, uh, technically that's the intentional tort of conversion. We get into property torts, we got to look at what types of property there are. There are three types of property. There are real property, which are things that are really not movable, more permanent objects, houses, fences, trees, crops. That's real property, things that are basically permanent uh, stuff. Uh, then we have personal property, and personal property is basically everything else. Uh, your computer, you know, your car. A, you know, the things that I have in this picture here. Just about everything else falls under personal property. And obviously, if you drive your car into my house and do damage there, then you've damaged my you know, real property. You could be sued for that. Or if you steal my car or damage my car or whatever, uh, you could be sued for that. So those are kind of simple. You know, those are two types of property that are pretty simple to understand. But we also have a third type of property, and that third type of property is known as intellectual property. And intellectual property are, is really things that, that you either created uh, or invented. Uh, so intellectual property could fall into things like uh, if you paint a picture, that's intellectual property. If you write a song, that's intellectual property. If you invent some product, that's intellectual property. And you can be sued if someone uses that intellectual property without your permission, even if they don't take the original thing. Such as, let's say that um, I have a, uh, I, I take a picture um, of a, I don't know, a sunset. Uh, it's really, it's a really beautiful picture, and I put it on the internet. And somebody takes that picture and then uses it at, in an advertisement for their business. Now I still have the phys physical picture; it's still on my camera but somebody is using it. So they didn't actually take my physical one, but they're using it without my permission, and that's a violation uh, of a copyright law. So that's somebody 
harming me by using my intellectual property without my permission. Okay, so that's where copyright and patents come in, and we'll get to those here in a little bit. Some torts that harm property, and some of these are used more often than others. We have trespassing, um, which would be going over somebody else's uh, land. Typically, if I trespass across your lawn, I'm not going to get uh, sued for that. But maybe if I'm trespassing um, and I ruin some of your stuff. Uh, an example I saw was a, a, a case in western South Dakota where a farmer was moving his cattle home. And he moved them across somebody's winter wheat field. And his cattle destroyed the winter wheat, or at least some of the winter wheat. That was trespassing that caused damage. Um, so, I mean, that would be a tort there. Uh, a nuisance, sometimes we see this. What a nuisance is, is an unreasonable interference with the use and enjoyment of your property. We have the right of quiet enjoyment of our property. It doesn't mean that people have to whisper as they walk by your house. But it does mean that... Um, that if, if your neighbor is so loud that it's interfering with your, you know, the normal use of your property, then you could sue. Oftentimes we'll see an injunction for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a nuisance could be a barking dog. Uh, I think I talked about in class a loud air conditioning system that a, that a business had put up, a school had put up. That could be considered a nuisance. Um, so that, that would be an interference with your property. An attractive nuisance. Now, this one's a little harder. I'm going to take a second to, to read specifically what an attractive nuisance is. Um, but it's a potential harmful object so inviting or interesting to a child that it would lure a child onto the property to investigate. Even, even if they're trespassing, that you still could be sued if that child is injured if it falls under an attractive nuisance. Now, it usually is it's set up to protect young people um, from, from things that could harm them. Let me read to you. I'm just going to read a paragraph or two out of here. Uh, an attractive nuisance is a potentially harmful object so inviting or interesting to a child that it would lure the child onto the property to investigate. An unenclosed swimming pool, for instance, or a fountain containing goldfish could be an attractive nuisance. Ordinary objects can attract and injure children, an idling lawnmower, a paint sprayer, a table saw, even a family car. Children are also fascinated by construction sites and equipment, gasoline pumps, wells, tunnels, dump dumpsters, paths, and stairways. You may think that almost anything could injure a small child. After all, even a stick in a yard can be picked up and poked into an eye. Yet a stick is not so unusual or enticing as to draw children over to their peril. And not every dangerous condition is an attractive nuisance. Most natural conditions, such as a lake or a natural steep bank, are not considered attractive nuisances. To be liable for injury, an owner must create or maintain a harmful object. Okay, so we're talking about things like, you know, maybe you have an abandoned house on your property. And a kid crawls into that house and, and, the fall, uh, and is walking up the stairs and the stairs are, are uh, dilapidated and falls and gets injured. Could you be sued for that? Potentially, yes. It is a, an attractive nuisance. Most of the time with an attractive nuisance, what the, the owner needs to do is just small things that would protect themselves. If they would have had the door locked or boarded up, then they've taken the steps to protect against somebody um, being injured there. What we see a lot of like pools would be an attractive nuisance. So you, That's why you put fences around pools. You know, if you have an underground pool in your yard, a fence around it would protect you against a neighbor's kid walking in, falling in, and, and being injured there. So attractive nuisances um, are, are these things that may attract young children that if they are injured, the, the landowner, the owner of it, could be liable for those injuries unless they have taken some basic steps to protect young kids from them. Okay, so attractive nuisances could be like old cars, you could, you know, just fencing those in, old buildings, sometimes just locking them up, uh, construction equipment, uh, you know, a ladder up against a roof, and let's say you're shingling and you go home for the night, and you leave that ladder up there, and a kid crawls up on the roof and falls off and gets injured. Could you, could, could you be sued? Yes. What could you have done? Taking the ladder down. You know, oftentimes it's just simple steps. 
Uh, you own a mine out in, let's say, the Black Hills, and in a, in a you have a property that had a, an abandoned mine on it. You put a gate a, across that mine so no one crawls inside of it. Uh, if you Google search attractive nuisance, you get this, which I didn't think was very accurate. But when you add this, all of a sudden, now it becomes accurate. Okay, so sorry about that. Those were those were torts that can be used against personal property or real property. But what about intellectual property? Well, copyrights come in there. So copyrights protect you from other people basically copying your work that you have designed or created uh, in some way. You know, pictures you've painted or taken, um, songs you've written. Things like that, uh, poems, uh, lots of things. Com you, uh, a computer program, those things, things are copyrighted. With copyrights, you should realize that copyrights, as soon as you create something, it is automatically copyrighted. That you don't have to apply for a copyright. But if somebody uses your 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 work without uh, your permission, and you don't have it officially copyrighted, then it becomes you got to somehow prove that they stole it. They took it out the internet. Do you have proof that you had it first? And if you can prove that, you can prove a copyright violation. If not, it's harder to prove. So you can apply for a copyright, um, it, which basically says that you have it. But you don't need to do that with copyrighted work. But you know, if you're an artist or if you you make money certainly off of your work. Uh, it seems like a smart thing to be doing. When work is copyrighted, it's copyrighted upon your creation, and it lasts for 100 years. And after 100 years, it goes into the public domain. Uh, you can sell a copyright, and you'll see a lot of times that in the music industry that uh, maybe I'm an artist, I write a song, but uh, part of my contract is that the song belongs to, I don't know, the recording industry. Uh, so even though it's mine, it's not mine. They they get credit for it. Or maybe I buy, let's say you write a song and I buy that song for you and from you. And then someone else wants to remake that song a few years later. Um, I own that song now, not the, not the creator because I bought that copyright. I could grant the rights to, to sing that song or not. Uh, but those are copyrights. The other... The other thing that we'll see uh, with intellectual property are patents, and these are inventions. Um, there's been a lot of inventions, you know, we got some great inventions over time, things like this. Then we have some less than amazing inventions, you know, uh, snowball maker, I guess we don't have hands. Case cracking eggs is too difficult. Uh, how about this one, the food cooler, some good stuff there. Uh, solar powered fan. You know, we have all kinds of inventions out there that I'm sure are all copyrighted. Um, I'm not going to go into this one. That takes a little explanation, and it's not even all that interesting. But what a copy, what a patent is, and I must have skipped it. I thought I had a definition of patent on my PowerPoint, but I don't see it here. But the definition of a patent, I must have taken it off by mistake. It, it protects inventors. It protects inventors from things that they... You, if they create something, then they have the exclusive right for it. And you have to apply for a patent um, but to the patent office. And if you get a patent, then nobody can really copy that for, it's usually about seven years. Um, and then again, if someone uses it without your permission, then that's where lawsuits come in. With patents, they eventually expire. And you see this a lot with, with medicine. Let's say that I create a drug that uh, lowers cholesterol, and I get it patented, then I can sell that drug as mine, uh, and I'm the only one that can sell that exact same recipe for that drug. Other people can sell cholesterol-lowering drugs, but they can't copy my recipe and, you know, just call it something different. But after that patent expires, then other companies can basically copy that recipe. They can't give it the same name, but that's where our generic drugs come in. And generic drugs are quite a bit cheaper. The reason we go with seven years is, well, that's what the federal government has set it at. They could set it at whatever, but that's what the law is. But it gives the creator exclusive rights to make money on that invention for a limited amount of time. And then... Um, 
you know, then it goes out to the public to make uh, anybody can use it. Okay, I think I'm going to stop at this point for here, and then I'll pick up on, on, on another one.